Hello, recent acquisitions, quite a lot to get through. Probably going to be part of Collector Diary, we shall see. Rather more than I was planning, in fact. And I'm filming this part a few days before the paperback show, which I'll probably see some of you there. And, you know, <laughs> I will be in disguise, but I will be wearing my I'd rather be reading Ballard um, badge, which Dorset Bob gave me. And we'll begin with some news. So the good news is I've been in touch with Chris Beckett this afternoon, just briefly, and he is writing again. And if you don't know Chris Beckett, this is one of his wonderful short story collections. There will be an overview of his work on the channel soon because I'm a big fan. There's an interview with him on the channel from about a year ago. I've mentioned him several times. You're probably not reading him. You probably should because he's fantastic. But he was unwell last year and he hadn't produced anything for a while, but he is writing a new book, which is great news, but nothing else on that yet. We have to let the man get on with it. So that means there'll probably be a new one next year, which is excellent. So a pile of things to get through. I'm going to begin, first of all, with paperbacks. And I'm going to give pride of place to the very wonderful Daniel, who watches the channel, who's in Puerto Rico, who's been a real star work. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for the, the postcard, who sent me some books all the way from Puerto Rico. And he's a very, very fine man indeed, a writer himself as well. So it's great to sort of have something gratis from, you know, somebody who's a real... A real sort of devotee of what I do here and it's great to interact with you always Daniel so thanks for the lovely postcard and um, he's got really nice writing and he says here are a couple of books you might like you mentioned that the CL Moore book is hard to find in the UK and look at that he sent me a best of CL Moore and these are hard to find in the UK and even though I've read most of this there are a couple of stories in here I don't have and that's great and I absolutely love this little series but as I say they're virtually impossible to find over here so thanks very much Daniel I really, really appreciate that and that gives me a chance to go back to some of my favourite stories find them all under one cover excellent so I do love CL Moore she's very very important and probably my favourite pre-golden age post-scientific romance writer I would say so there you go also, Daniel sent me this wonderful little door of the fall of Chronopolis, which I already have a UK when I read it many years ago. But it's nice to see a door one for my little door collection. Isn't that fantastic? This is an amazing book. If you haven't watched my Barrington Bailey overview, which I posted a couple of weeks back, do. Because if you like pure SF and you're not reading them, you really should. <laughs> So that's going there as well, which is nice, which is nice. So what else have we got? I've got in a few weeks time, I'm doing a guest slot at an event at a bookshop in Bath. I'll put the link below with Adrian Tchaikovsky and Lauren Bukesh. Is it Lauren Bukesh? I'm not sure. And this is, um, she wrote The Shining Girls, which has been an Apple TV series. And this is her current book. This is a proof copy of Bridge. And this is still only available on hardcover, so I've got this to read. I haven't read this yet. And Lauren originates from South Africa, so that's going to be a really interesting evening. So I'll put a link below if you want to come along, and that's in Bath, where I live, of course. There we go, and you can get tickets from the link. So I've got that to read. So I need to get that under my belt. So that's something. I've read Adrian's new book. It's not quite out yet. I think maybe by the time I post this it will be, but it can't be far off. So what else do we have? What is on trend at the moment on SF Booktube? Well, thanks to those little tykes, Matt Defoe and um, his fellow Canadian Richard Rempel at um, Vintage SF, and I think maybe Ira at um, SF Worlds of Wonder is involved with this as well. They're very much into their James H. Schmitz at the moment, the Tales the Amberton books, and I've got the trilogy and um, I haven't read anything by him for quite some time, though I picked up The Universe Against her the other day and had a look at that. And um, it has sort of reawakened my interest. And I thought, am I sort of going to go for hard covers? Because they're Sidgwick and I do like Sidgwick. So I decided to plump it because there's not many nice copies out there. And you can't get the first one in hardcover in the UK. You can't get them anyway, they're out of print. But the first one was never published as a hardcover in the UK as far as I can tell. So I got the second one, The Telsey Toy, here in Sidgwick. 
and that's a fist very very beautiful I think you'll agree and absolutely lovely and you do see this around now and again but really really nice little octavo hardcover and I did have a door one and I gave it to my friend Nick so you know because I've got a Hamlin you know which is, is really really nice and then of course is that the second one or the third one I can't remember and anyway I'll correct it on the screen I also got this which is very uncommon indeed the lion game and again a Sidgwick very nice and absolutely lovely I haven't actually taken this out of the um the package yet but yeah very uncommon so I decided to go for these they're not cheap these I sort of save up a bit do some eBay selling but lovely lovely stuff recently somebody on the channel said they were puzzled by my almost visceral dislike of series and I mean that's because they haven't watched enough of the backlist I do like some series but I don't think the series is really ideal for the SF novel most SF novels which are really good tend to be singletons but I've talked about that in other videos and by now you will have seen Brian Aldiss video where I talk about that a little bit with reference to non-stop but we are in serious territory today so what else do I have so just looking here and looking at some publication dates because a couple of books here which I haven't had before 1989 and they are part of a series and um, let's see 1987 so I'm going to show you two books by Chelsea Quinn Yarbrough who I really like there is a video in the early days of the channel there's going to be a new one I've mentioned her several times probably her most famous SF novel is False Dawn but this is A Flame in Byzantium in Tor hardcover first edition from 1987 and this is one of a trilogy and these are historical horror novels featuring a woman from ancient Rome who during her ancient Roman period is transformed into an immortal vampire and this is a sidebar series to Chelsea's Saint Germain series which is at least 30 books and they're fantastic I'm very passionate about these and I've had one of them for ages but I've lacked the other two so I've not read them and you can read them independently because that's how Chelsea works she goes back and forth in time you know she publishes them she doesn't do this strict chronology thing she just uses these immortal characters as a way of looking at human history and her historical research and writing is fantastic I have read history books by her and this is a candle for D'Artagnan um, featuring the same character so Flame of Byzantium as you'd expect is set in the Byzantine Empire um, let's have a look it's set um and this is the first in the sequence so this is 500 years after Nero's Rome she first appears in Nero's Rome in one of the Saint Germain books and this one here kind of a d'Artagnan is the third I would say is that the third yeah this is the third because I had the second one so I've got them all and I think you'll agree they're absolutely lovely got these on eBay her books are quite easy to collect because a lot of people seem to be selling them off now and I don't know why because they're fantastic and if you like history these are unbeatable but I'm going to talk about them in more depth another time and I need to read those they're very much summer reads to me I do love reading her books in the summer I have said this before and last year I didn't read any of her work in the summer which is a total fail but we've just done some work in the extension so we've got a comfortable reading spot again recently of course I've talked a fair whack about Brian Stableford who sadly passed on and looking at the Hooded Swan books which I'm a big fan I've got the pan ones had them for decades I decided to pick up Halcyon Drift in hardcover which you can usually get for about £10 published by J.M. Dent nice plain livery nice and simple the way I like it very 70s and this is the third of six Dent only published the first four the last two were pan paperback originals the fourth one the paradise game I haven't got I can't find a decent copy around I gotta wait until one turns up it'll happen so I've got the first three in hardcover now I've had the first two for ages and yeah my favorite space operas or certainly amongst my favorite space operas so if you've not come across hooded swan give them a try I do seem to be sort of filling in gaps at the moment and I am enjoying it and somebody I've talked about a lot on the channel recently Barrington J Bailey um, in fact let's move these and we'll put something else there but thanks again Dan it's fantastic stuff so let's get um, let's go with Flaming Byzantium 
and um, Canfield D'Artagnan's. You can feast your eyes on those on the edge there. Um, is Barrington J. Bailey, as I say. And I decided to upgrade to a couple of hardcovers because not all his books are published in hardcover. It's the sort of middle period ones, the 70s ones, when he was with Allison and Busby. And you can pick them up at reasonable prices. And early on, I showed you Fall of Chronopolis, and this is the hardcover of Fall of Chronopolis. There we go. And quite plain, really nice. Um, one of my favourite books by him. Great stuff. And this is the other time travelling one, which is Collision with Kronos, which in the USA is called Collision Course, and it was a door. These were Fontana in the UK, I think, so I've got Fontana ones. So I was pleased to pick those up. I am thinking about the Soul of the Robot, maybe. That's got an even plainer jacket. Um, am I going to go there? I don't know, really. I do like Soul of the Robot, but, you know, very often you've got to think about how much you can really afford to spend. But these are really cheap, luckily. So I got both of these um, on eBay. Fantastic stuff. Really, really good. And if you've not read Bailey, do watch my video about him, because if you like pure genre SF of the finest quality, you can't go wrong. Then to finish this tranche, we have a bit of an outlier. This is an interesting one. This is somebody I've been aware of since the 80s, never got around to reading. Saw one of her books in Hay on Why. It was an underwater SF novel. Decided not to buy it. It was in really good nick. I remember stocking some of them in Penguin in the mid 80s when she was doing a series. And I really felt that I should give her a try. And that's Sydney J. Van Sk I don't know how you say this. Sydney J. Van Sikok. Sayok? Somebody tell me, please. Sydney J. Van Sayok, and she died in 23. This is Cloud City, and that's a really beautiful book, I think. Berkeley Putnam, USA hardcover first. Really nice. And this was really cheap as well. Um, nice green cloth there. And this is, I say, somebody I've never read, and I've decided I should give her a go. I believe she's fairly routine, but I am on a bit of a female writer's kick at the moment. It was such a nice book and it was so cheap, I decided to go for it. So I think that's part one of this little update. Other stuff, other things. I've got other things which have come or which I had and I forgot about. And I decided I'd talk about some things I've been reading recently as well, because I've got a bit frustrated with a few things. And something which I went back to last week um, for the first time for quite a while um, was this Kindred um, by Octavia Butler. And I showed this edition briefly in my Lagan and Rest video. I'm going to do something about that. I'll talk about that probably next week. That'll be a short form video. I am really struggling with the long form videos because with this cold I've got, what you're not seeing is that I'm coughing and spluttering every few words and it's all being edited out. So I can't do the long form stuff and it's driving me mad, to be honest. And I've got this Brian Aldiss featurette, which is <laughs> it's taking a long time, believe you me. So we will get to those things. The paperback phase coming up on Sunday. You'll probably see this Friday night. So this is something I was going to do a video about on its own. I decided not to because I decided I didn't want to waste too much time on it. And a while ago I would have shown you this. This is Sherwood King's If I Die Before I Wake. Very beautiful book, Penguin Modern Classic, and this is a crime novel. And I have been having my issues with crime. And recently I decided to read it and follow it with a viewing of the film version, which is called The Lady from Shanghai. Very beautiful indicator blur there, as you see. But really, my issue with crime has been something which Matt at Bookpill said a while ago. He's not read much crime. You start to have a go at it. And he read a book by Ross MacDonald. And it was his first MacDonald. And funnily enough, I only read Ross MacDonald for the first time last year. And I have to say his prose is absolutely fantastic. And his characterization is great. And his twisty plotting stuff is good. But I found by the end of the book that I didn't really care about the plot and the the whole thing that was driving it. And it was very expertly done. And it came out naturally as a course of the way the characters were. So it was a cut above your average who done it. And there are all sorts of crime novels. And I tend to favour crime novels which are about criminals and which are truly noir about the evil or malice in ordinary people and circumstances. But I have been feeling more and more that I'm not going to read much more crime. And I have to say that was very much the case with this novel and this film. The novel is very, very routine. It's a classic thing. It's a bit like James M. Cain, 
where it's narrated by a guy and he's a bit of a sap quite honestly and you can tell he's going to be a four guy for this femme fatale which Rita Hayworth played and you know you just see it coming from the beginning and obviously maybe when it was written it wasn't a cliche then no it's a different story and for that kind of thing it was okay but nothing special I really don't think it deserves to be a Penguin Modern Classic am I going to keep this it? a really beautiful book so I may do that because I do love my PMCs but the film which has Orson Welles as well as Rita Hayworth and who's one of Welles as a Baldy project is just dreadful it has a few virtues but it's that classic thing of you've got a novel with a perfectly good plot that would have made a good twisty quite exciting film with the right director and they threw in lots of other stuff and pulled all the guts out of it and it just doesn't come together at all it's a really terrible film so that's going on the sell part despite the fact that it's a beautiful blu-ray because space is an issue here so that has disinclined me to read more crime and i've been thinking for a while i've only got maybe three or four crime novels i haven't read and even though i am going to do more about crime on the channel i did some in the early days i really don't think i'm going to be going there much i do feel i've I've kind of burned it down and my reading of crime largely came in two tranches mid 80s to early 90s and then again about 15 years ago I started reading European crime which I really love and so there will be some things about those things I like but I don't think I'm ever going to go back in the genre in a big way really so it's it's a shame but it has sort of helped clarify things for me because in a way I want to read less widely as I get older in some ways and sort of not less widely but drop certain things and that's one of them. I have been on holiday and I've been out and about a bit so I've managed to pick up a couple of things. I have been cutting back on my buying because it's all gone a bit far and even though I might get a few things to the paperback show I am really trying to sort of pull it back and recover because it can go just go too far this whole book haul business so i'll show you some other stuff first of all which i've been reading and viewing and then sort of go from there because i've got a couple of things which at the moment i'm feeling i might dnf and i put this down and this is a very beautiful book and i bought this from mike at fine edition some time ago and it's an author i like of other things by and this is doris Pesertia and this is Mr Justice in Dobson absolutely beautiful mint copy and this was her first novel and Pesucci is very strange I really recommend her book is it a billion years of earth that's one of them and I can't it's um what's the other one called Star Rider which is fantastic really original and I reviewed Star Rider in the very early days of the channel and I've got a complete collection of her work apart from two zombie novels she did under a pseudonym which are door books and she's very very weird and very strange but this is atypical of her work and I'm not enjoying it at all and this actually feels more like a crime novel even though it does have time traveling it is an sf novel but it has the feel of a crime novel and isn't typical of her work but i will be doing something more about her soon scott bradfield's a big fan and she is really well worth the read but i'm not loving this one i have to say i'm just not feeling it so i'm going to pop a chair on the podium a moment so i may actually dnf that one um because i i, I keep picking it up and i'm not getting the feel at all something which i bought recently which I've I've never been a massive fan of this film and I was drawn by its beautiful beautiful livery and its indicator again and I do like a good director's commentary and I am a bit of a fan of this studio and this is a hammer blu-ray and this is the gorgon now if you've ever seen the gorgon it's it's really let down by bad special effects I'm not somebody who's normally that bothered by that I can suspend disbelief but even for its time, which I think is 1964, the effects really are terrible and they just don't come off. But it's got Lee and Cushing and Barbara Shelley. It's got a quite interesting but overly academic commentary by Kat Ellinger and a friend of hers. And, you know, they know their stuff, but ultimately you think it really is a lot of fanboy stuff dressed up as academia and it doesn't essentially hang together as well as they make out. So... It is kind of sort of that mixing of low and high culture, but they don't seem to have an overarching theory to tie all together, but really beautiful. And you know, the actual film itself is really well made, apart from those terrible special effects. The one thing that neither Ellinger or Ch her chum mentioned in this, and they covered all sorts of things in the commentary, is of course Shamblo by C.L. Moore, which has to be the most famous 
way that the Gorgon myth has been transmuted and transformed and pushed into the twenty into the 20th century, you know, and anybody who really knows they are um, their pulp fiction would know it and they don't appear to. So I guess that says a lot, but very beautiful. And that's going to stay in my hammer collection because I am finding now I cut back a lot on films, but I am keeping things which have a really beautiful livery and which have relevance to the rest of my collection, which sadly this does not as much as I think it's really cool looking. What else? Um, I've been reading this again recently, um, Calacane by Karen Boy. First appeared about, let me see, it must be six, seven years ago in Penguin Mon Classics. Let's see, Penguin Classics, I should say. Um, first published 1940, Penguin Classics 2019. This is a Swedish dystopian novel from 1940 and Karen Boy the author wrote about five other, other novels. She wrote poetry. She traveled a lot in Europe when the Nazis were coming to power and she was terrified by what she saw and she wrote this. And this has quite a few affinities with 1984. The problem with it is that she doesn't really depict the totalitarian state that she is writing about um, in any sort of visual way. And it's because it's a first person narrative by this guy called Callo and he invents this drug which you give to people and they have to tell the truth and of course this has massive implications for a dystopian society and suddenly everybody's guilty and it's quite narrow but I have to say you know there is a reason why often these sort of books remain obscure for decades it's because they're not as good as the ones which are more famous a book which is better than this, which is forgotten and would be nice to see back in print, is a book called One by David Karp. I don't have my copy of One anymore. It was a Penguin Modern Classic back in the 70s, 60s. It, it had this cover, it had this um, Edward Hopper picture, which is quite enigmatic, like a lot of Hopper's pictures, on the cover. And I bought this in an art gallery in Paris. And I bought it because I like Hopper and also it reminded me of one. Now one is in print, um, Valancourt do it in the USA and it's not the number one, it's the word. So it's O-N-E and it's a strange little dystopia, but it's more of a gentle sort of one. And in a way it reminded me of Play a Piano. So if you like Play a Piano, um, that sort of level of dystopia, Seek Out One is good. And I do wish somebody would reassert in a mass market format. And I would like to read it again. So that's the kind of minor dystopia that I see back in print. As I say, this is okay, but you know, you do get this thing. And Orwell couldn't have read it because it wasn't published in English before that. And there are quite a few similarities. But of course the thing is, is with mid 20th century dystopian fiction, it grows out of the political movements of that time. So it's based on real things. You know, it's based on communism, it's based on fascism. So there are naturally these affinities, but I'm not finding this that great on a second look. And I wasn't convinced first time around either. So I think that's gonna go on the sell pile. So what did I get? I, I did buy some books today. I wasn't meaning to, because the paperback fair is coming up but I happened to be in Chippenham of all places in Wiltshire and sort of went there on a whim. It's not far away. Occasionally I've worked in Chippenham and the video editor and I were out and we were tootling on. I said, let's go into Chippenham and wander around. And it's not the most edifying of places. Sorry if you're from there, but you probably agree. And I went to the charity shops and picked a few things up and I was really pleased to get this, which is absolutely beautiful. And that's The Tale of Troy by Roger Lancelin Green. So it's a puffin, A format, early 70s. It does have a faded spine. It's in beautiful condition otherwise. Unbroken spine, lovely. And I do like these old classical figures who have the classical education, who can do the retellings. And I thought for a while I'd quite like this. And this is still in print. So I was really pleased to get that. And it looks like it's got proper Greek vase figure work on it. Absolutely gorgeous. I think you'll agree. So that one is one to go on the read pile. I mean, him, Henry Treese, who was the mentor of the brilliant British crime writer, Ted Lewis, and Rosemary Sutcliffe, you know, Robert Graves. These are the people, you know, if you read about that stuff, go with them. You won't really do any better. Mary Reno as well, of course. Then I got a silver book and I cannot remember this edition. And I think this probably might have had 
a Jim Burns illustration in hardcover. I need to look it up. This is one of the later Majapur books. <clears throat> this is the King of Dreams. Fundamentally, I bought this because it was in A format and Broken Spine and because it was Silverberg. And even though I'm less interested in Silverberg after 1980, I thought, you know, for 199, you can't really go wrong and it's beautiful. And I'll probably read it one day because I am going to read some more of Robert's later works. I've read some, but I do have the urge to do more. So that was a really nice little pick up. This is entirely a nostalgia buy. And this is a book I didn't think I'd ever pick up. And I'm sure I must have flicked through and read a bit of it back in the day. So I used to sell this all the time and its sequels. And they were really popular. And this is The Many Coloured Land by Julian May, which is the first of the Saga of the Exiles. There were four of these. And there was a adjunct volume called The Pliocene Companion. And absolutely beautiful. Pan and fantastic condition, 199. And this is for my nostalgia collection. And it's interesting looking at the back, the people who like this. Science Fiction Review give it a glowing review. And Science Fiction Review is a good magazine. Zelazny thought it was really good. Fritz Leiber thought it was really good. Vonda McIntyre, all, you know, trustworthy names. So I probably should go back to it and have a look at some point and do a nostalgia read because these used to be absolutely massive, really huge, early to mid 80s. They started to fade away a bit towards the end of the 80s. But really great stuff. Lovely, beautiful book. Matt really does take me back. Give me a warm glow. Please to get that. And you've got to buy the A formats when you see them in this neck. To finish off today, this is something which I already own in a hardcover first. And I was amazed to come across it. I need to clean up a little bit, but it's in fantastic condition. It has a price clip on the inner flap. But this is a uk hardcover and i think as, as such as at world first i think as well of kazuo ishiguru's never let me go and i got this for 199 isn't that absurd 199 and the only real flaw as i say is the price clip there there's a little bit of wear at the back of the dj there but i'm going to cover that i need to take this offending sticker off um, and even though I've got a copy, I, I couldn't leave it there. I thought this has to be rescued and go to somebody who really wants a first. Obviously, I'm going to stick it on eBay and try and make a bit of money on it, as you do. But fantastic. If you haven't watched my video about Never Let Me Go, it's a few months back to watch it. So that's it. I think this might be it for this week. I'm trying to finish this all this video up and you know that'll probably be the next thing you see after this but as I say it's really difficult for me to sort of speak for very long at the moment it's been like that for weeks so um, I do apologize bear with me thanks to everybody who's commented about the 7,000 subs and the advice and the ideas and the fact that you like the way the channel is I do want to make it better at the moment I've just got to go with things and get better and you know really try and get through that and it's become a drag talking about it over the last year but it is what it is so at the moment um what has pleased me the most out of this probably the Lance and Green what has pleased me the least well it was almost certainly the film of the lady from Shanghai and as I say I think I might DNF the Pesuchia and the boy there's nothing wrong with DNF and stuff. You can always go back to it and you won't like everything you read. It doesn't work that way. So anyway, whatever you're reading, I hope you're enjoying it and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.